Hello and welcome to Project Art Now. This time I want to talk about world building. Please share your thoughts and opinions on the comment section. Before going any further, it's time to announce the manga of the week and it's Dr. Stone. Hope you enjoyed this Kohaku drawing. If you are interested in reading this sci-fi survival manga, you can get it via the link on the description. While you are there, I'd very much appreciate if you follow me on my social media. Take a look at my store where you'll find variety of products with cool designs. Also, get a copy of the project site. World building is a vast topic, therefore it'd be impossible to cover it all on a single video unless I were to make a 20 something hour long video which I want. So I will focus on a question that myself and many other writers have wondered since the dawn of time. Why should I include on the story? Because more often than not, we have this super intrinsic world full of religious and political mechanics, complex magic systems, languages and whatnot. and while it's truly fun to create our own worlds or in some cases full on universes, that's not to say that every single detail is important to the story or has any kind of relevance. On more than one occasion, I've heard people advise only to include what has impact on the story we are telling, and I partially disagree with the story, because yes, a bombardment of information that doesn't help the story or even the characters in any way tends to be boring, but believe it or not, it can be done. I have come across three techniques to accomplish this. Also, I'm not sure if technique is the right word, but it's the one I'm using. I need to mention that I'm not even sure who invented those techniques or even if anyone has claimed them. I'm telling you this because I signed a name to each one, but for all I know it might not even be the right name, but I'm sure that's not a big deal, right? The first one is the technique of relax. How does it work? Simple. If there is any piece of information you wish to deliver to your readers, however, your consciousness might not be relevant, well choose a moment and relax within the story or of low tension. A great example is the hair of the Saiyan race. As any Dragon Ball fan will know, the hair of pure blood Saiyans doesn't grow. We first learned this from Vegeta during the Cell Saga, after he and Trunks left the hyperbolic time chamber. And yes, there was some level of tension, but that particular moment was all in all pretty chill one. And so, while the Saiyan hairdo had nothing to do with the overall story, it remains an interesting piece of information, and we never heard anyone complain about it, even though I have heard people complain about storytellers that delivered information when it wasn't necessary. But why Akira Toriyama gets away with it? Because he did that right at time. I mean, imagine for a moment that Vegeta had explained to Goku about the Saiyan hair back in Namek when Frieza pierces his hair. It would have been terrible, because it would have ruined one of the most emotive moments in the story with, let's be honest, some pointless information, and while on the original one that information was also pointless, it was because on the moment on which we as the audience received the information. Let's move on to the second technique, and I call it this one the other books. This one requires a lot of work, as what you do is all the extra information you have, you write another book or books just for the sake of it. I bet that you already know which one I will use as an example even before I mention it is of course the Lord of the Rings. There is so much information surrounding this tale and arguably not all of it is relevant, although some might claim it is, but rather than including everything on the three books that compose the main story, Tolkien gave us all that extra information in other books, such as the Silmarillion. I'm saying that wrong, aren't I? Anyway, it gave us so much information on the Middle Earth and even on the characters we follow on the Lord of the Rings, also of course on the Hobbit. So here's the thing you could read and enjoy the whole saga of the Lord of the Rings without even knowing anything about the similarity, which kind of proves the information provided there is sort of irrelevant and yet millions have bought and read it. Why? Because it's always nice to expand on the lore of the world we love. But if all the information will have been included on the original books, well, just imagine how big those books will be. But since it's a different book, people who are interested in knowing more, more about the Lord of the Rings will pick it up. Those who aren't want and everyone's happy. Now, I realize there is something I should have clarified from the beginning, but well, better later than never. And it's that just because I'm referring to information that has no weight on the story doesn't mean it's not interesting or has no overall value. With a note, it's time for the third technique, the Twitter technique, popularized by J.K. Rowling. Now, I'm not a fan of the wizard boy and his numerous adventures, deck, but I can recognize the world building there is immense. And so, not everything is found on the books, but some of it, the author shared it on her Twitter account. Granted, many mock her and some fans even point out she even contradicted the books. But just because she failed at it doesn't mean it's not a good idea to use social media in order to expand and share about the worlds we created. Just make sure you don't make the same mistakes. And so those were the three techniques for sharing extra info from your world even if it's not relevant to the story. You could also mix them or maybe you have another. In which case please share it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this video has value for you and that you'll be back next week. Bye bye.